The term chromatic median sounds a bit technical, but I will show you how original your music will sound and how easy it is to use them. Hello everybody, Xander here. Welcome to Learning Music Skills, the place where I talk about all kinds of music topics for becoming a better songwriter, producer and musician. Let's get creative. I've written five examples and after each one I'll give you more practical tips and theory insights. And also at the last example you'll find out how chromatic medians can really take your melodies into unknown territory. So what are medians and chromatic medians? When chords have a mediant relationship, it means that they are a major or a minor third apart. And this goes for up and down. When medians are diatonic, it means that they only use the notes that are represented in the scale. And also they have two notes in common. If I would go from the C to the E minor, that would be diatonic. But if we change the E minor to an E major by raising the G, we have ourselves a chromatic median. Now the chords only have one note in common. Here is example number one. I will first start with the original progression and then immediately after that I'll play the adjusted one. The rule with basically everything in music is that the more things you keep the same, the smoother and less noticeable the change will be. In this example I only raised the C from the A minor into a C sharp, thus changing it into a major chord. The result is that the chord progression has a more radiant sound to it, because two major chords which are a third apart follow each other directly. Example number 2. Do you notice how powerful the A flat major sounds? It's really incredible, I love this sound. But as you can see I needed to change two notes instead of just one. The result is that this chord stands out a lot more. An easy way to integrate and connect this chord into the progression is by keeping the common tone in the same voice. And it sounds especially good when you do it in the top voice like I did in this example. In the later example you will also see that it sounds very good when you do this in the melody. Let's have a listen to example number 3. And again I will first play the original and then straight after that the adjusted one will follow. In this example I raised the G from the E minor chord, making it into an E major chord. This E major sounds a bit like a secondary dominant to me. For example if it would have directly resolved into the A minor, then it would have functioned as one. The amazing thing is that we have such a strong result by just raising one note, especially when you also emphasize this note in the melody. Let's repeat the same procedure, but now let's travel to the dark side and do it with some minor chords. Example number 4.
Do you notice that the E flat minor chord really grabs your attention? It definitely darkens up the progression a lot. Let's take it one step further. The E minor chord sounds a bit tricky to me and a bit out of place. But by sustaining the common tone in the same voice, we can integrate it more. And this brings us to our last example, which is definitely also the most notable one. Example number 5. The A flat minor really sticks out and it even sounds a bit odd to me. Even though the A flat minor and the G share a common tone, it still sounds out of place. The reason that it sounds so out of place is because we had to adjust all of the notes. This means that all of the notes are foreign to the key and scale that we are in. Let's see if we can smoothen this progression a bit and integrate the chord a bit better by adding a melody that sustains a common tone. The major 7 of C is B and is also enharmonically the same as the minor 3rd from A flat minor, which is spelled C flat. I find that by adding this common tone, it integrates the A flat minor a bit better in the chord progression. Now for a melodic bonus tip, and this can be applied to our previous examples as well. You can really spice up your melody by playing a scale that belongs to the chromatic median chord that you currently are on. So in our case, on the A flat minor chord, we play the natural minor scale of A flat minor. And you can really get some interesting and rich melodies out of this. I divide the chromatic medians into three categories, just as I did in this video. And there's a system to it. Category number one is when you have to adjust only one note. Category number two is when you need to adjust two notes. And category number three, you might guess it, when you have to adjust all three notes. It's completely up to you which category you choose and find suitable for your song or composition. And as you saw in our previous examples, it's not only used to spice up your chord progressions, but it's also used to enhance your melodies as well. Just play the corresponding scale of the chromatic median that you are on and you're on your way to original melodies. Just a word of caution. If you use chromatic medians a lot, this can destabilize the tonal center of your chord progression, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you just need to be aware of it. The technique of chromatic medians has been used by composers and songwriters for hundreds of years, and it's still used until this day. So you can definitely say that this technique has stood the test of time. There's even more to discover about chromatic medians than I was able to show you today. And I would love to hear if you have any good examples or ways that you use them yourself. In any case, I hope you enjoyed all the examples that I wrote. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And for now, see you next time.